in the middle of the desert. A group of boys are digging a hole in the sand under the scorching sun. Suddenly a rattlesnake appeared nearby and the boy, unable to bear the task, took off his shoes and met his end by trying to touch the snake. Meanwhile, Stanley is walking through the city when suddenly his shoe falls on his head and slams him to the ground. As his father is researching a cure for foot odor, Stanley decides to take his shoes home. But at that moment he is surrounded by police. Police now believe the shoes belong to Stanley, as they belonged to a famous baseball player and were stolen at a charity event. Police took him to his parents and immediately noticed something suspicious. His father, Stanley III, has dozens of pairs of shoes in his apartment, and Stanley IV has a poster of the baseball star on his wall. Based on this evidence, Stanley was taken to court and offered two options, imprisonment or 18 months at Green Lake Camp. Stanley clearly chooses to camp, and during the journey he can't help but wonder if this incident is part of his family's curse. The bus traverses a vast desert full of holes, and for a moment Stanley thinks he sees a traitor with a mule, but it turns out it was just his imagination. He arrives at a small, seedy town filled with boys in prison uniforms. Stanley meets the director's right-hand man, Mr. Sir, who finds Stanley's name strange. The boy explains his family's surname backwards as Stanley, and it is tradition to name his son Stanley to keep the pun. But, Mr. Sir doesn't care. I went on to explain how things work here. The camp has no guard towers or fences, hundreds of kilometers of desert, and no water sources, so no one tries to escape. All Stanley receives is two pieces of clothing and a shovel to use to make the hole. Stanley has to dig and shovel a hole five feet deep every day. The longer it takes to dig, the more time it will be exposed to the sun. You should also be careful to avoid rattlesnakes and yellow lizards, which can be deadly. Next, Stanley met the camp counselor, Dr. Podansky shows him around and tells him that the first rule is not to embarrass the guards. Podansky has the other boys take Stanley to his sleeping area, where they find the dead child's vomit. The doctor calls the boys by their real names, but they only call each other by the nicknames they give them here. My youngest boy has zero, but he does have a little headache. He is so called because he never speaks. Stanley then asks where he can refill his water bottle, but when he uses the boy's real name, the man pushes him away to use his nickname. Then Stanley gets a dinner of just beans cooked in different ways. X-Ray steals some of Stanley's food, claiming that since he didn't dig today, he is entitled to more. The boys ask Stanley why he was sent here and he replies that he stole the famous shoe. And Zero surprises everyone by asking if the shoe has a star on it. When Stanley confirms it, he remembers the part of the trial where the baseball star explained that he grew up in an orphanage, donated to charity, and called Stanley a fake fan and that he couldn't sleep until late at night and that his grandfather I remember the argument. The family is cursed, which is why Stanley III was not successful in his inventions. Even King Stanley I was unlucky and made his fortune in the stock market, but was killed by a notorious criminal named Kissing Kate. She received this nickname because she kissed her victims after killing them, leaving bright lipstick on their faces. However, she did not kiss Stanley. She simply took his treasure chest and left him in the desert. Next morning, the boys are woken up while it is still dark to start work. Everyone gets breakfast tortillas and scoops, but when Stanley grabs them, X-Ray pushes him away and takes them away. It turns out that X-Ray's shovel is too short for anyone to use. When they arrive at the excavation site, Lord Stanley explains that if they find anything interesting while digging, they must report it. And if the overseer likes it, they will be given the day off. But Sar insists they are not interested in specifics, only in building character. Everyone gets to work, and when you throw dirt, it may end up in another hole. Stanley tries to tell them to be careful, but the boys just laugh at him, and Stanley thinks about the curse again as he plays with the hole. His ancestor Elia worked on a pig farm and fell in love with the boss's daughter Myra. He visits the local fortune teller Madame Gironi to learn how to win the girl's heart, but Gironi tells him to forget about the girl and travel to America to meet his destiny. Elia refuses to give up and asks his boss to marry Myra, but Elia is turned down when another candidate offers a giant pig as a dowry. He returned to Gironi, who eventually took pity on him and taught him a trick. Every day Elijah had to take the little piglet up the mountain and drink water from the river while singing songs. Elijah becomes stronger and the pigs grow larger until they can be used as the best dowry. After he gave up the pig, he had to come back and carry Jeroni up the mountain and give her a drink as well. Otherwise, a curse will fall on him and all his descendants. Stanley followed every step of the way for several days as the pig grew and was delivered to his boss. However, both pigs were the same size, so the boss let Myra decide who she wanted to marry. Myra is undecided and suggests a guessing game to help make a decision. But Stanley becomes very angry at her flirtatious attitude and decides to go to America, as Jeroni had originally said. Unfortunately, he forgot to take Jeroni to the mountains before her departure, so she cursed her family as she had promised. Back in the present, Mr. 
Sir stops his truck at a hole so the boys can fill their water bottles and teases Stanley about getting blisters on his hands for the first time. Zero was the first to finish the job and he dug so fast that the boys thought he was eating sand. When Stanley finally finishes the hole, no one will help him, so he must learn to crawl out on his own. When he returns to town, he finds Mr. Sir pointing a gun at him, but he was actually shooting at a yellow blur or lizard. The gunshot misses and the lizard jumps out and attacks Stanley. But, Mr. Sir fires again and the little lizard is killed. As the days pass, Stanley begins to adjust to daily life at the camp. He wakes up early in the morning, eats bad beans, and then spends the whole day digging in the dirt, which causes more blisters on his hands. Dangerous animals are often nearby, and showers may not be available. The other boys also constantly harass him and make fun of him for being nice. Stanley keeps a low profile to avoid getting into trouble, and when writing to his mother he lies that he is having a great time at a normal summer camp. One afternoon, Stanley discovers a fossil and brings it to Podansky, but the doctor tells him that the keeper has no interest in fossils. He also said that there was once a lake in the area and that the land around it belonged to the director's grandfather. This triggers a flashback that shows how vibrant and prosperous the city once was. A merchant named Sam often came in a mule-drawn cart selling wonderful onions that he claimed could cure all diseases and keep deadly lizards away. Sam admires Catherine, a local teacher, and he always brought her a bag of onions, so he would give her a jar of peaches that she collected in return. All the men in town liked Catherine and didn't like the attention Sam received from her. One rainy day, the school's roof leaks and Catherine has to send her children home so Sam volunteers to fix the roof. This allowed him to spend more time with her and build a bond with her, so he started cleaning other areas of her school as well. However, she also had to see that the adult class in the evening repeatedly made inappropriate comments towards her. In fact, her warden's grandfather Walker asked her out on a date, but she declined, angering her warden. Eventually, the school became the most beautiful building in town, but Sam lost his meal and bought a boat to replace it. One rainy afternoon, Sam and Catherine finally work up the courage to kiss, unaware that Walker is watching, and Walker quickly spreads the news throughout town. Within hours, citizens gathered and burned down the school as punishment. Catherine panics and asks the sheriff for help, but he is drunk and asks for a kiss. When Catherine pushes him away, her sheriff taunts her and blames Sam, reminding her that interracial relationships are illegal and Sam will be executed. Sensing her fear, Catherine runs to warn Sam but it is too late and the townspeople shoot Sam while he is on the boat. After a while, Catherine returns and she shoots him before she can give the sheriff the kiss he wanted. She then left town, and she became an outlaw known as Kissing Kate. Back in the present, X-Ray approaches Stanley and tells him to bring it to him the next time he finds something. Later, in the city, Stanley accidentally falls on one of his tormentors and almost gets into a fight. Her boys quickly appeased her, but now Stanley has earned their respect. Nicknamed the Caveman. He also has a better spot at the waterline. After some time, Stanley receives a letter from his mother that his father's experiments keep failing and he may soon be kicked out by his landlord. Realizing that Stanley is ready, Zero admits that he has never learned and asks Stanley to teach him. However, Stanley refuses, saying that he is not a good teacher and that he is too tired at the end of the day and needs rest. During another excavation session, Stanley was surprised to discover a small object with the initials KB. The boys suspect it's a shotgun shell, but it seems too thin. X-Ray takes the object and ignores Stanley, who tries to stand up for himself. As soon as Podansky finds out, he contacts the boss. The director soon arrives and the boys are shocked to find out that the director is a beautiful woman. She was very pleased with this discovery and told X-Ray to rest for the day, and she instructed the others to excavate the area completely around X-Ray's hole. This afternoon, the boys work harder than usual but they were in the wrong place and couldn't find anything. Over the next few days, the boys have to continue digging the same tunnel they built, but all they find is a small clock face. Soon the director gives up and the boys begin digging individually again. The next day, as Mr. Sir was filling his water bottle, one of the boys stole a bag of sunflower seeds from the truck. After Sir leaves, the boys begin to share the bag, but unfortunately Sir soon realizes that the bag is missing and turns the truck around. The boys try to hide the seeds in a hurry, but they accidentally drop them at Stanley's feet, so Stanley uses all his strength to cover them with sand. When Mr. Sir returns, the seeds are still visible, so Stanley protects his friend and says he did it, surprising everyone. Mr. Sir then takes Stanley to the warden for punishment. Kate's office is filled with posters about her kiss with Kate, 
and her principal shows her a special nail polish made with rattlesnake venom. After quickly painting his nails, the warden slaps Mr. Sir for getting in the way of Stanley digging something stupid like a seed, and makes Stanley go back to digging. When he returns to the excavation area, the boys see him as a hero and Zero completes the hole. In return, Stanley agrees to teach Zero how to read. The next time they saw Mr. He had two terrible nail scars, and he was so angry with Stanley that he didn't refill his water bottle. When Stanley remembered what he had seen in the office, he thought that the small tube he found was kissing Kate's lipstick. Another flashback shows that Kate only killed people who were involved in Sam's death and the destruction of the school. However, she stole a lot and after getting Stanley's treasure chest first, she buried it where the lake was. While resting, she was found by the Walker couple, who were in dire need of money because the town was in ruins after the lake dried up the day Sam died. Instead of killing them, Kate decides to take revenge more gently. She let herself be bitten by the lizard and pointed out the location of the chest in her grave, so that William and all his descendants, like guardians, would forever be digging in such a vast desert. Back in the present, Stanley begins to teach Zero how to read and write. Zero reveals that his real name is Hector Zeroni, meaning he is a descendant of Madame Zeroni. Since Zero is a fast digger, he starts helping Stanley dig holes, making the other boys jealous. One afternoon, Zero told the story of his mother, who worked hard to provide for him but one day, she disappeared. Since then, Zero has lived on the streets. Some time later, one of the bad guys continues to harass Stanley for help in the hole. Stanley confronts him and Podansky encourages them to fight to solve their problems. As the boys struggled on the ground, Stanley was easily overwhelmed so Zero stepped in to help and nearly killed the other guy. Podansky shot into the air to make them stop, and soon the guard arrived to find out what had happened. The boys told him that Zero was helping Stanley, so he immediately explained that he was teaching Zero to read and turned around. However, the guard is angry and Podansky continuously taunts Zero by calling him an idiot. Zero eventually broke down and hit Podansky with a shovel before fleeing into the desert. Mr. Sir wanted to sue him but the principal told him not to. Zero has no one so they can delete his profile and pretend he was never there. In the evening, the boys discuss how Zero will die in the desert. Stanley couldn't help but worry and think about the story of Stanley, the first person to survive 16 days in the desert after being stolen by Kate. Apparently he found refuge in a place called God's Thumb, but no one knows what it is, and Stanley was the first one who couldn't tell because he was almost crazy when they found him. The next day, a new kid arrives to replace Zero, which upsets Stanley. He came up with a plan and when he came to get food for their canteen, Stanley stole the truck. Mr. Sir immediately chased after him and clung to the door so Stanley tried to push him away and was distracted, causing the truck to fall into the hole, refusing to give up. Stanley left the car and ran into the desert with the other boys cheering him on. When the principal found out about this, she ordered Mr. Sir to report Stanley missing in two weeks because by then there would be nothing left to find. Under the blazing sun, Stanley continued walking and ignored all the venomous lizards in the area. Finally, he found Sam and Zero's boat below, exhausted but still alive. He survived by eating peaches given to Sam many years ago, which became jam in a jar. After Stanley also ate some, he noticed a mountain in the distance that looked like a thumb and realized that this was where his ancestors survived. The duo left the boat and started climbing, which required a lot of effort. Stanley slipped and almost fell, but Zero quickly used the shovel to help him up. Unfortunately, this injures Zero's hands so Stanley wraps them up as best he can. The boys continued walking for a while, but soon Zero became weak and fell down. Stanley catches him before he rolls, but Zero is so exhausted that he passes out, refusing to give up. Stanley picked up his friend and carried him to the top of the mountain, just like his ancestors had carried the pig. Finally, Stanley saw green and discovered a small stream with water and Sam's delicious onions. He immediately woke Zero up by drinking the water to recover. Stanley also sang a song that his family loved, not knowing that it was a pig song passed down from generation to generation. Mrs. Zeroni's soul can now rest in peace. When the curse was lifted from the family, Stanley III finally completed his invention and discovered an effective method of treating foot odor by mixing peaches and onions, so the whole family was very happy, delighted. The next morning, Zero confessed that he was the one who stole the shoes. He considered the shoes a donation to the shelter he was staying at and simply took them without knowing that they were famous. However, the police were soon chasing him so he took them off and threw them over the bridge, accidentally landing on Stanley. Zero was finally caught stealing Pilar's shoes the next day. Stanley isn't crazy. In fact, he sees this as destiny and is glad it happened. Meanwhile, Stanley's lawyer arrives at the camp to pick him up because it has been decided that he is innocent. The director kicks her out. 
but the lawyer promises to return with reinforcements. Back with Stanley and Zero, now that they're feeling better. They go back to the search area and find the hole where Stanley found the lipstick. After much searching, they finally found the famous chest. Just then, the guard and Mr. Mr. find them, but a group of lizards rush out and cover the boys in their chests to protect them. The babysitter decides to wait for the lizards to kill the boys and tells how her grandfather made her dig even on Christmas. Morning came and the lizards had not yet moved or bit the children. The wait is suddenly interrupted by the lawyer, who arrives with some policemen. The principal makes up a story about two boys stealing a safe from his office and running away with it, but Zero proves their innocence by writing Stanley's name on it. They then return to town and the lawyer puts the trunk in the car before announcing they will depart. However, Stanley refuses to leave without Zero, so the lawyer requests his records. When they discovered the files were missing, the police asked for permission to investigate and learned that Mr. Sir was a fugitive and that Padenki was not really a doctor, so the man and the director were arrested. Soon after, it rains for the first time in decades and the boys go to a party. A few days later, Stanley and Zero and their family opened the chest and found many treasures, including at tea shares. Stanley wants to divide the treasure with Zero and the family agrees, so the first thing Zero does with the money is hire a private detective to find his mother, leading to a very emotional reunion. Some time later, the camp closed and the boys were sent to real counseling services. Stanley and Zero's families become neighbors in an upscale residential area and their camp friends often visit them. Stanley's invention was a huge success and the famous baseball star is now making his commercials, proving that everything is connected from the start. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and show us some love with a like. Thank you for watching.